Welcome to History B354, The Reformation. Um, I am Professor Eric Sack, uh, and I will be your instructor for this course. The course is basically ready to go, if not all complete. Um, so I'll address that shortly, but at least um, the, all the information that you need to know to get started and start on the course um, is posted in Canvas. I just wanted to um, also, even though there's a document introduction to the course, meet you, so to speak, virtually by having an introductory lecture here, which is not part of the weekly course lectures, but simply uh, welcoming you to the course. Uh, I hope this is a course that you will enjoy and will get something out of. Uh, it's certainly one I enjoy teaching. This lecture, as it will be every week, um, is posted in the module um, for getting started. The first um, item in that module is the PowerPoint presentation for this um, lecture, for this talk, so to speak. Um, and that will be the, the module that we follow every, every week. So that there will be the PowerPoint and then the lecture, PowerPoint and then the lecture, and then the, the readings and so. But I will take you through this as, as we go. Now, turning to the next item on the PowerPoint for today is the nature of this course. Um, this course, uh, as I'm assuming you know, is 100% online asynchronous course. Now, what does that mean? That means that there are no scheduled times where we will be meeting virtually um, all together. And for me, there are positives and negatives to this kind of a, a format. The negatives um, are that we don't get to see each other and actually talk and discuss uh, in real time. Uh, now, I'm certainly open to uh, scheduling Zoom meetings with any of you um, or even meeting in my office in person on campus. Um, I'll come back to that point, but please feel free to contact me and if you have questions about the course or if you know you just want to talk. That's very possible. But the structure is that uh, we don't have that classroom experience of being there all together. Uh, and that is not optimal in my view. The positive is this asynchronous 100% online format allows you to work through the course at your own pace, um, especially in uh, <laughs> this day and age. I know a lot of you probably have a lot of things on your plate, and this is uh, the utmost flexibility in terms of doing this course uh, at the times you see fit. I mean, you can lecture, listen to the lectures at you know, 10 p.m. if you would like. Um, and so that, that is the positive aspect of it. And consequently, there are no firm due dates. Uh, I guess it's my belief that if this is an asynchronous course designed to allow you to do it at your own pace, um, that means that you can turn in the assignments when you feel you're ready to. There is the uh, absolute deadline of May 5th, the end of the course, where all work must be turned in. But before that, um, there are no set due dates. Now, if you do look at the syllabus, which I hope you will, of course, um, you will see due dates. Uh, in, in Canvas, the assignments do have due dates. Those due dates are there uh, as a guide for you in terms of where they would be uh, placed within a, a normal progression of an in-person course, so to speak. So they're there to help you. Now, that's the positive of this asynchronous online course. Is it, As I said, it allows you to do it at your own pace. Um, and then also with the lectures that will be posted, um, you can go back and review them multiple times, as many times as you want. Um, I think that could be or should be a help uh, for you, whether, whereas in, in class setting, you get the lecture once. Um, so this is also a positive. The negative, um, my experience has been, is that that freedom often can get out of hand, meaning not freedom can't get out of hand, but students then will put it off and think, yeah, I don't have to do anything until May 5th, actually. So, you know, why worry about that now when I have other things going on in my life? Um, I can always put that aside, make that a, a lower priority. That would be the wrong approach because this course, um, you need to be able to keep up, uh, I think, to, to, to do well. Um, and so I hope that each of you 
we'll try to schedule time for working on this course every week um, and just do that own scheduling for yourself. So with the freedom comes that added responsibility of doing it on your own. So if we can handle, manage those two aspects, the freedom and the responsibility, it can be a, a positive thing. Um, but if you don't take that responsibility and follow along, you could find yourself uh, behind and having difficulties and problems. But those are issues we'll deal with um, when we get there. But anyway, that's the, the nature of this course is just that. It's this asynchronous online freedom responsibility. I hope uh, everybody can balance those pretty well. I will not be looking up. Uh, yeah. Looking up, I'm not be looking over your shoulder, so to speak. I will not be sending you emails saying, "Oh, you haven't turned any work yet." Okay, that's that's your responsibility. Um, if you have any questions about that, uh, please do ask. Uh, as I said, I'm always available to talk uh, over Zoom or email, um, and I hope we can provide a structure that will allow you to flourish within this course and really make it your own and get out of it what there is to get out of it or what I, at least I think there is to get out of it, or what you might want to get out of it. So in terms of the, the nature of the course, I think that kind of addresses some of those preliminary issues that we need to be aware of and just be conscious of what we're doing as we're going through this course. And then the next point then we can move on to is getting started. Um, classes for this semester officially start January 9th, which is a week from Monday. Um, I will be publishing this course, if not later today, tomorrow. Um, and as I said already, there are sufficient um, documents posted that you can get started. Not all the lectures are posted yet by any means. Uh, and even some of the readings, um, I still have to uh, actually copy and, and scan and get posted. I believe everything is set except for the lectures for the first three weeks, but the, the, the readings and the assignments and the discussions, which we'll come back to. Um, so that is where uh, we are now, but I'll be, again, filling out the course uh, in the near future and lectures. I'm not going to promise. I can't promise that I'll have all the lectures done uh, and posted by January 9th. Um, and so theoretically, it could be that some of you may end up uh, getting ahead of me, which if you do, fine, let me know and we can deal with that. But I will try to make sure that I'm always at least, at the very least, one week ahead um, of the, the, the lectures so that, you know, um, the week two lectures will be posted before we actually get to week two. Now, that's, that's my goal. I hope that will be the case. I hope that I won't get behind uh, in, in the lectures and getting them posted. Um, so we, we will go with that. There is a module getting started. Um, and so look, look at the documents in that module. In that module, um, there is this lecture, the PowerPoint, first of all, the PowerPoint um, introduction for this lecture, this lecture or this talk. And then there are um, three other documents. One is a self introduction of myself. Um, I think it's important that students know who their professors are, who their instructors are. Um, and so I give a rather probably lengthy introduction to myself just to let you know where I am, who I am, where I'm coming from in terms of this course. Um, and that I think is really important uh, because in some ways, in my view, um, and you'll hear more about this as we go along, uh, university education is not a teacher teaching some set body of information and helping you learn that body of information. Uh, I mean, it is not not that, but that's not the basis of it. You are benefiting from that individual perspective of the professor uh, or instructor or whatever um, who's, who's teaching it. That is the value of it. Um, and so in some ways you're paying not for the course, but you're paying for me and my course, if that makes any sense. So I think it's important. Is that, again, that you know who I am and where I'm coming from, my background and experience. And so that's given somewhat in that self-introduction. Um, I hope to get to know all of you um, through the means of this course. And in the first week, you will see there is a discussion uh, for you to introduce yourselves. 
Um, basically, that is not just not asking you to go into the level of detail that I did by any means, but just to share with your fellow classmates, because we are in this all together, even if we, we do it all individually. Um, you know, what level of, uh, of studies you're at, uh, why you signed up for this course, um, what you hope to get out of it, um, those types of issues. Um, so we have some sort of group feeling that are there. Now, the discussions, I should have said this, uh, I'll get back to this, I guess, at the, at the end, of the last point on the PowerPoint. Um, there's 10% uh, of your grade are discussions, but not no individual discussion is, is graded. But I'll come back to that when we get there. So that self-introduction for me is there getting started. And then that's followed by my curriculum vitae or CV, which is an academic resume. And that's just another way of introducing myself, saying here's the official document that I put forward as this is me. Um, as I said, as a resume, as a professional document that states what I've done and who I am and those types of things. And then there is um, a reading, uh, which is called Introduction to the Course, which goes through a lot of the detail, the perspectives, and how to approach this. And that, I think, is uh, an important document to read. So even if you um, are listening to this and say, okay, I'm not going to really want to do much more of this, please do read that Introduction to the Course, because it gives you at least my perspective on what the course is about, what's required, what's expected, um, and how to go about meeting those expectations for the course. Uh, that document is also then posted in week one. Um, the idea is that you will read it before week one, but if you have it, then it's going to be assigned in week one. And we'll get back to that uh, shortly. So I hope you will look at that um, and look at those documents there to see about where do you go from here. Um, listening to this lecture is the first part, uh, and then reading the intro introduction to the course uh, is the second. The following module, after getting started, is uh, course documents, and there you will find four documents. At least as of now, I think that basically will cover it for, for, for the time being. First of all, the syllabus, uh, and that's something that you should really pay attention to. Um, often students don't really consider the syllabus, don't look at it, don't really go through it, but the syllabus is almost, it's semi-contractual, um, meaning that is the, the, the guide for the course and what when the assignments are due, what's expected, what the readings are, and those types of things. So if you have any questions about what am I supposed to do, the syllabus will uh, go over those things. So you should definitely read the introduction to the course and then read the syllabus uh, from there. The other documents in that uh, course documents consist of uh, an essay on historical argument. And I'll be talking more about that as we go through things. And then a guide to writing the text assignments or the text analyses, and then the, a guide to writing the final exam. And I'll be addressing those in due course as well. Um, so I think there should be plenty for you to, to get started on this course, even before week one, so to speak, which would be good um, if you could um, to set it all up properly. So when we start with week one, you're, you're informed, you know what you're getting yourself into, and we go from, the, from there. The assigned readings now, which is the fourth point on the PowerPoint uh, lecture. There is no assigned textbook for this course. There are assigned readings. Um, two of the major readings, actually are both kind of books, um, are, are mine. Um, don't worry, you don't have to buy them. <laughs> I don't assign my own work uh, to profit off of it. Not that anybody, uh, any academic makes money off of their published scholarship, but one is, is, is my book on Luther and the Reformation of the Later Middle Ages. Um, and then the other is my uh, edition and translation of a 14th century Augustinian Jordan Quedlinburg's exposition on the Lord's Prayer. What is posted um, there in terms of the course readings are the, the what's called the page proofs. Um, they are the, the final proof before the book goes, uh, goes public. And so you can rely on the page numbers and everything else. Um, you'll see, I think, proofs written across the page, but you can still, I think, read it pretty well. Um, so those are 
readings that you will be reading um, and are assigned readings. And then the lectures. Uh, the lectures, um, instead of a textbook in addition, the lectures, I hope, will provide the context for reading the documents. Because if you look at the syllabus, you'll notice that there are primary documents, sources from the period itself, um, that are assigned every week. Um, and coming to an understanding of those sources is what really history is all about. Um, that's how we are able to say anything about the past based on what the extant evidence is, and for history, the extant evidence, uh, in addition to material culture, uh, ruins and things like that, are the uh, actual texts that come from that period. There is a suggested textbook. Um, if you are coming to this course and you say, oh, that sounds interesting, the Reformation, I've heard about it, but I really have no idea what it is. Um, I'm not really sure when the 16th century was. <laughs> I'm assuming it came after the 15th and before the 17th, but I can't really be sure. Um, there is a, a basic textbook that I uh, suggest, uh, and that is Lindbergh's The Reformations. Um, and I give, also give the assigned suggested readings each week. The, that is not part of the course material. I'll come back to this um, later on, too, in terms of grading your assignments because the basis for grading your assignments is the course material, the lectures and the assigned readings. And Lindbergh is not part of that. But can you use Lindbergh? Please do. If you find the lectures, um, that you need more context for even understanding the lectures, please look at Lindbergh, if that makes sense. So that's there to help you if, if needed, as a guide to needed, but it is not technically part of the required readings. Um, now, let me see. Where was I? We are with the assigned readings. As I said, the um, the two books, basically, uh, the Jordan's Exposition on the Lord's Prayer and my Luther and the Reformation of the Later Middle Ages are posted in course readings. Other readings uh, will be posted in the week that they're assigned. You know, for example, there's an essay, also an essay of mine, in week one on history, religion, and theology, or something to that effect. Um, and that's, that is assigned reading for week one, uh, and that is posted in the module for week one. Some of the other sources uh, will be posted in the modules when they're assigned and or are links to web documents, sources on the, on the World Wide Web. Uh, those links you may need to cut and paste into your browser. I've gone through and I checked them all, and at least they worked for me. Um, basically and so if you have problems accessing those websites let me know and we can try to figure that out as well when we get there uh, but those are the other uh, required readings or those sources on, on, the, on the on the web in that sense there are no required purchases for this course you don't have to buy a textbook or a series of other texts that would be required so it's all kind of self-contained in, in that in, in that sense. If you have any questions about any of this, please do you know uh, feel free to ask at any point. You might want to look to in that uh, course documents the guide to writing the text analyses um, because that will go over what I'm meaning by that. I'll give you a question. You have to answer it in those contexts. In some ways, you can say, okay, is this really you know textual analysis? Well, yes, but it also kind of functions as an exam. Um, to see, you know, are you paying attention? Are you, you know, incorporating the course material? Are you um, trying to integrate the lectures with the readings? And how does that all fit together? Um, that is the, the, the concept behind those four analyses. And we'll, again, we'll be going through these. Uh, I'll be addressing them too in lectures as well as in the final, uh, which is a broader overall comprehensive question about the Reformation. Was it you know, a revolution? I'll come back to that uh, in the first lecture, I think it is, or so. So I hope that takes care of those issues. Um, then the getting started, the assigned readings, the assignments uh, consist of those four text analyses, each worth 15% or 15 points uh, of your final grade. Uh, the final, I believe, is worth 30, and then the discussions as a group is worth 10. Now, I have a difficulty grading discussions. Um, my experience has also been that if you don't assign 
points to discussions. Students often don't participate. Um, and the idea is to participate. The idea behind a discussion is to engage with the material, to engage with the course. I think that's very important. Um, but I have difficulty in terms of assigning grades, if that makes sense. Because how do you grade engagement and participation? I'm not sure. Uh, I have had uh, one student in particular who was in one of my courses. Um, and the first time he was in uh, my early medieval course, sat at the back of the room, didn't say a word all semester, but he was very engaged. He nailed every exam. Um, he ended up being one of the best students I've ever had. Um, he took my course the next, next semester too, and he ended up even writing his master's thesis with me uh, eventually. So he was very engaged, but didn't really say anything. So engagement doesn't mean simply how many words you, you know, spew out of your mouth in a discussion or type on your computer. Uh, so I don't want to quantify that. I don't want to say, well, you have to make insightful comments. Um, discussion is supposed to be discussion. So you should feel free to make comments, um, ask questions. Uh, express concerns, worries, lack of understanding, and all those things demonstrate engagement. Um, but I'm not going to quantify and evaluate saying that's a bad engagement. No, it's all engagement. Um, therefore, basically, um, I'm not going to say this. Well, I am going to say this, actually. It's not so much that everybody will get all, all 10 points for the discussions. 10% uh, 10, 10 of your grade, 10 points. Um, but it's certainly possible that everybody will. Um, you know, I will be participating in the discussions from time to time as well. I'll certainly be checking on them. I'm not going to say, okay, you have to post in every one. And th th if you do, you'll get the 10 points. And then if you only post in 80% of them, you'll get 8%. I'm not necessarily saying that, but use them as a way to engage with your, your classmates, with me, with the material. Those are the three bases. Um, and I give you know, a prompt for the discussion and the idea is that you answer that prompt based on the course material. Some of these uh, discussions are asking more for your opinions um, and thoughts. Uh, and that was something that I addressed in, in the grading um, when I talk about grading and introduction of the course. I'm not going to grade your opinions or beliefs. Do I care about your opinions and beliefs? Absolutely, but you are entitled to your own opinions and beliefs. I'm not going to say that is a bad opinion. I'm going to give it a D. Or that's a good opinion. I'm going to give it an A. I think that would be wrong. Do I have my own opinions and beliefs? Absolutely. I'm entitled to those too. What I can grade is how well you analyze the course material, how well you understand the course material, and use it to apply it to a problem that is given you which is what the text analyses and then the final two uh, are all about. And so I address that in terms of formulation too. I say don't use the terms I think, I believe, I feel, because I'm not going to grade those things. That undermines your argument. Um, but that gets back all to you know, the, the historical argument um, and grading issues. So the discussion basically, you know, you can think of it as a free 10 points more or less. Um, it would almost be okay. What would cause me to give someone less than 10 points in the discussion? If they had only had participated in one or two, that would not be sufficient for 10 points. Um, I'm not going to say that, you, that everybody has to log in and make some entry every single week. Um, but so, practically speaking, that would be the best way to go about it. You know, in many ways. But if there's 15 discussions, I don't know if there will be 15 or not, but if there's 14 or 15, if you are participating in 14 of them or 13 or even probably 10 or more, that is fine in terms of the, the grade. If you drop down below 12 to 10, then it gets to be like, well, okay, that's going to knock your discussion or participation grade. People participate in different ways. That's my point, and I'm not going to say you have to do it, participate in one way only by, you know, the number of words you put forward. And I, so if you have any questions about this, again, please ask. I hope this makes sense. Um, if it doesn't, then let's talk about it because I want you to understand what that's all about.
But that's kind of the, the assignments um, in the course. Um, that is then, I guess, the last point on the PowerPoint, the discussions. So with this, um, the introduction to the course itself will come in that document, uh, introduction to the course. And then I'll be saying more about it, uh, the course and what the Reformation is and those things uh, in week one lecture. So I hope this gives you enough introductory material to say welcome, um, to give you the sense of I know now how to start with this course. What do I do first? What do I do next? How do I get going on this? Um, and again, I'll be publishing all of this um, either later today or tomorrow. Uh, and you can get started as you will. Uh, so that's why I wanted to do this early. I will also uh, post an announcement that will go to everyone to say the course is now published. Um, you should start with this lecture, PowerPoint lecture, and then the introduction to the course document, and we'll go from there. So welcome. Um, again, I'm looking forward to this uh, semester in this course. This is my area of specialty, so I'm, uh, I do enjoy teaching this course probably more than any other. Um, and I hope you will too. Uh, for whatever reasons you're here, I hope uh, that it will uh, meet your expectations as we go through this course, uh, learning about this period of, of European history. Even though courses don't start till January 9th, um, if you do start early, if you do have questions, please feel free to email me. Uh, I'm readily available by email. Uh, and not necessarily via Canvas, even though I think I do get the, the notifications of Canvas, but make sure it goes to my email address, esaak at iupoi.edu. And those I res respond to pretty well. Um, between now and the ninth, I may not be as quick responding, but I usually will be anyway. I've been responding to students over break already. So if there's any questions you have or any concerns, or I just want to chat, I would be open for that too, uh, even before the night. Um, so just let me know. Engagement, participation, being active and being responsible are the keys to success, in my view, uh, for this course. So I hope you will um, enjoy the rest of your break, so to speak. Happy New Year to everyone, uh, and again, I look forward to getting to know you over the course of the semester. I will be in touch, um, and that's it for now. So, Happy New Year, and I'll see you again before too long. Bye-bye.